Cantrell and this is the Casino at the Empire, Leicester Square, London. Welcome to the WSOB UK Masters. Players from all corners of the world have come to take part in the first event of the tour here in London, England. The World Series of Backgammon is now in its second year, a multi-event tour with four WSOB Gold Cube competitions. There's the UK Masters here in London, the Nordic Open in Copenhagen, Denmark, and the Riviera Cup at the Palm Beach Casino in Cannes, France. The eight top qualifiers overall from these three WSOB events will be joined by eight other players who qualify exclusively from online events. It's a 160,000 euro shootout that will see the winner pick up the 100,000 euro prize. Not too bad for a weekend's work. Every player at each event is hoping to win one of these babies, the coveted gold cube, presented to the winners of each WSOB gold cube event. Here's John, our commentator, registering just like the rest of them. Yep, just like the rest of them. Why backgammon? It has the complexity of chess and the excitement of poker. It's the, the concept of luck and skills combined. You can win against the world champion, you can lose against the beginner. So what about the game do you love and what do you hate? Well, I love to win, I hate to lose. So what's the longest you've ever played backgammon in a row? Oh, maybe 12 hours. <gasps> it's, it's the ultimate game. I take pills when I go that long. <laughs> Pure glucose. It's like life, it's full of surprises. Good luck to you, I hope that you win. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's not often a pretty girl talks to me <laughs> at length. Now we're very lucky to have two high-profile players as part of the commentary team. So without further ado, I bring you Denmark's Gus Hansen and Britain's own John Clark. So, you're both commentators and competing at the same time. What is that like? Oh, it's kind of a, a new feeling, but uh, I'm still trying to compete. I'm still trying to win the event, but... Uh, in case I don't, I'm here to commentate everything. Now, is it true you have a nickname, the Great Dane? Uh, I heard that. Yeah, I think I think you might be right. On is that, that right? Yeah. How and why? Uh, well, I think mostly because I'm from Denmark, and <laughs> uh, apart from that, I don't know who came up with it, but uh, it it kind of stuck. I mean. Uh, but we know that Gus is coming back to his roots here. Um, Gus, I'm sure he'll be happy to admit this himself, learned his analytical skills from backgammon, transferred it superbly to poker, and has been amazingly successful uh, in poker. And is it fair to say, Gus, that these skills came from backgammon originally? Definitely when I took on poker, kind of trying a different game, the analytical skill is just spending time analyzing positions. Yes. I could use that very well, translating into poker, so, so wow. definitely being a backgammon player has helped me tremendously. Uh, in backgammon, uh, there's always something to think about. There's yeah. constant excitement. And that's why it's a kind of game that you can get constant stimulation from. Uh, and I think that, it, I don't know if you agree, Gus, but the, for me, that's one of the differences between the two games. Yeah, no, I, I gotta agree. I love constant stimulation. And it is. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Now there are 123 players at the WSOB UK Masters, so the battle is really on to win one of the eight bursts at the quarterfinal stage. With the draw made up to an even 1-8 after five late entries, the stage was set for a gargantuan battle between some of the greatest names in backgammon. 
the WSOB is open to anybody who has the skills and ability to take on the very best. London local Zoe Cunningham is one such player. When I was a child, I was um, very much into kind of geeky stuff, so I've always been really into maths, and I thought I was going to do maths forever, you know, when I started off in life. I'd always thought back then, it was like a game of chance, you roll your dice, you know, if you get a six, you're lucky kind of thing. But actually, there's so much more you can do with um, building structures, using your pieces, and so on. Meanwhile, WSOB commentator and world poker superstar Gus Hansen started well in his match before it dramatically turned and he lost out at the death. I thought I played a decent match and uh, was definitely a big favourite along the way, but uh, Dice wasn't really on my side and I might have made a mistake late in the match, which kind of turned it around and uh, now I'm standing here. Another big scalp in round one is Cartomatic of the USA. What happened? <laughs> With the tragedy there. I'm tired. I played. I played horribly. My opponent played well, but I've been uh, too many, too many tournaments in too short a time. I was. I started in Peoria, then I was in Paris, in Vegas, and here. It's just too much. An elated Zoe Cunningham won her first match. I, I feel absolutely delighted. I did not think I'd feel so happy. I. Just, I, I was feeling quite tense towards the end, and you get a bit tired. But I just. I can't believe I'm through. I'm. I'm astounded. I'm really happy. In another upset, the tournament lost one of its biggest names in Falafel Nathan Zone, who bowed out to his Israeli teammate Sami Akirov in a thrilling double match pointer. It came down to the end, so it's kind of like that point, you know, much. It was, it got, you know, I had a good position and then it got really bad and then at the end I didn't have much of a chance. So Falafel went out of the main event and dropped down into the consolation. This still gives him the chance of earning points towards the overall WSOB championship. So it's not over yet for Falafel. I'm still going to play, you know. It's not the end of the world. Meanwhile, WSOB rookie Zoe Cunningham continued her progress. It's fantastic. It's really good. It's not been quite as nerve-wracking as my first win, uh, where it was all kind of big jokers and lots of big swings. Whereas this one, I managed to get ahead and stay ahead. So, um, you know, just nice, steady through the second round. I'm really pleased. In another big upset, world-class player Sander Lyloff of Denmark loses out to best friend Mark Telcher of the UK. It, it feels bad to lose and it feels even worse to lose to him. So, and I even I had him in the match, but then I, I cracked. Maria Krancheva of Bulgaria blazed through the early rounds, taking out French backgammon machine Francois Tardieu along the way. She's on fire. But whatever happened to Britain's own Zoe Cunningham? Fortunately, it, it all went apart. I, um, I think I took a few cubes I shouldn't have taken, and you can lose a lot of points a lot of quick, you know, very quickly that way. So, um, yeah, I went out of the main, and then went out of the consolation immediately afterwards, kind of big tail off. And now I've played in this, I want to go on and play in, in the next two as well. It's just been brilliant, and I really want to go and maybe win the next one. Gammon, backgammon, doubling, schmubbling? For those of you at home a little baffled by the rules of backgammon, don't you think it's high time for a little backgammon school? The checkers are set up in this configuration. This is the starting position. Okay. My checkers move in this direction. Your checkers move in that direction. This is your home board. This is my home board. So what are the movement rules? Okay, Jesse. A player rolls two dice, mm -hmm. and this determines what he or she is able to move. Okay, a 5-2, you can move one checker, seven, or one checker, five, and another checker, two. Oh. What happens if you roll a double? Okay, Jesse, doubles have to be played twice. So let's say you roll a double four. Uh, you have to play a total of 16 pips, uh, in other words, four sets of four. So one checker, 16, two checkers, eight, um, four checkers, four, but you must play the full extent of your roll if you can. So where does the challenge come in? Okay, because these checkers move in conflicting directions, a sort of war happens uh, where checkers come into conflict with other checkers. If a player occupies a point with two checkers, he owns that point and it's safe. If, however, there is a checker on its own, 
a blot. This is vulnerable and it can be landed on uh, by his opponent and then has to go back to the beginning. So you're hit, what next? Okay, a soul checker, a blot, vulnerable blot, gets hit, it goes on the bar. This is like a prison and it has to stay there. So how do you break out of jail? You roll a number that is equivalent to an open point in your opponent's home board. You enter that checker and then you are free to move any of your other checkers. So how do you win? Okay, once you've got all your checkers into your home board, you bear them off according to the dice rolls into the checker tray. Uh, six, one, and the first player to do that wins. So you played a 13 points. What does that mean? Match play backgammon is always played to a finite number of points. Okay, and the first player to reach that objective wins the match. How do you get these points? Okay, Jesse, one of the ways to acquire these points is with the doubling cube. What's that? The doubling cube is the device that is used to raise the number of points that a game is worth. If a player thinks he's ahead, he will want to play this game for two points. His opponent then has the choice. He can pass for one or accept to play on, and that game is worth two points. If he turns the game around, this may well come back on four, and then this player has the same decision. Should he pass for two, or should he accept to play on for four? Now, if he gets gammoned on a four cube, he's just lost eight points. So it's a double-edged sword. Certainly is, Jesse. Um, this is a weapon, and correct use of the doubling cube is a key dimension of the game. When to offer the cube and when to accept it.